Ty, come on through, cocky. I want to pull my soap box, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is actually going to be, it's going to be a dual review actually. Um, of course you all know I was laid up in the damn hospital last week. So we're just going to do see, uh, episode 7 and episode 8 all in this review. And it really, is, it's cool because nothing really too much really went down. Episode 7, we started right off. They were having a moment when they were sitting there talking and Robin actually came out with the story of how the, the good friend of her and Juan stole money from them and how she has a hard time trusting people because of that. She just doesn't know who to trust. And really, when it comes to your money and your children, bitch, nobody, period. Even if that had never happened to you, nobody with your money and your kids, trust nobody, question everybody. That's just the way it is. Um, so they kind of went through that and I thought it was kind of wild, you know, Ashley actually has said, you know, that she literally felt bad about even mentioning the bankruptcy, um, cause she didn't, you know, realize that it was really all that deep like that. So that was cool. But then she didn't say anything. I mean, she should have just like said something to Robin. She never said anything to Robin about it. But um, and she could have actually did another apology if you really felt bad, you know, because that was kind of fucked up. It was it was fucked up that somebody steals your money. But now, you know, when you know better, you do better. This whole trip, Katie was just being a bitch. And I can see Katie's going to make me get her. I'm going to end up dragging Katie. She's starting to get on my nerves on a weekly basis. Um, she's just ridiculous. She's running around with her ass on her shoulders, and bitch, it's not that smooth for you, honey. Not at all. She's ridiculous. She's on my nerves. Um, Giselle actually needs to stop asking Katie if she's a, a good get high bitch. She done told you several times that she's, she's not a junkie, though we don't believe her. We don't believe you. We believe you're a slut and a junkie, but that's fine. Until she decides to come out as a slut and a junkie, then you need to motherfucking leave it alone, Giselle. Bitch, leave it alone. Anyway, um, there was a whole little scene where she literally excused herself from the group and went to bed, you know, because they had got on her nerves, insinuating that she was old. Get high, bitch. But whatever. Anyway. Um, one, I do, like I said, I've said at the beginning, I thought Robin and Giselle are actually friends, and I kind of like them two together. Um, they're they're my, actually my two favorite characters in this whole thing, but yeah, I like their relationship. It's cool. Now that Brene, I don't know why Brene actually doesn't actually have a regular role or, you know, an intro, because she's there just as much as these whores, but whatever she did, she just as messy, child. She's just as messy as she can be. But Brene, uh, Karen, and Katie actually got together at one point and were pretty much sicking Katie on Giselle, telling her, you got to stand up for yourself to set the other. I said, why is they setting her up? Because you know that goddamn Giselle is going to drag Katie if she go fucking with Giselle. But they went. They had this little vintage, that was cute, little vintage uh, photo shoot. They did some surfing, and, you know, just girl stuff. It was it was kind of cute. Um, Katie went and apologized and confronted Giselle, and um, it was so funny because she didn't even get any play. She didn't get a chance to try to get at Giselle because Giselle was like, "You know what? You're right. I'm so sorry, and I apologize." It was so funny because that's like the worst thing ever when a bitch gets her balls up to, to go tell a bitch off and can't get no play because they beat you to it. Be like, girl, you know what? I was wrong. I am so sorry. Then you end up looking like a fool. And that's exactly what happened. Then they went to a little drag show and then Michael actually showed up. And that's when all the problems got started because there wasn't supposed to be any men. And of course, 
they blew it all out of proportion, but more so big forehead more than anybody else. She just had a fit. And Ashley basically was half drunk and didn't give a fuck and basically told him, I don't give a fuck and y'all be going home and I'm fucking glad. I'm sick of y'all's ass. And I was like, girl, I'd have been sick of their ass. But um, I, I don't know that that was the right way to, to behave because you know who they are. You know who you're dealing with. So whatever. But I think Ashley's like getting to the end of her rope with Karen or bullshit. Okay, moving on. So now we're moving into... Um, episode 8. Again, Katie, shady, just aggravating. Aggravating, 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 and just ridiculous. Um, there were comments made that I really didn't care for. She, basically, Katie was talking about Giselle is actually on Andrew's list of do not likes. And he's, she's like, because she didn't want to help me with my event. That's not true. That's not true at all. She, it, she never said she didn't want to help you with your event. She told you what her drawbacks were. Never said that she wasn't going to help you. And you fired her and got all mad, flew off the handle and quit wanting to be bothered with her. I don't like that. I've had someone do that to me before, where they sat and hand-fed their mate things about you that are not true, and then the mate is looking at you with a side eye, and it's all things that this bitch has actually created, and it's not what's really actually going on. I've actually had that happen to me before, happened to me before, and the mate kind of looks at me like I ain't shit, when meanwhile, it's the two of you that ain't shit. Not just the, the so-called friend, but them and they motherfucking mate ain't shit. And then you done painted some old fucked up picture of me on your bullshit. Yeah, it's just kind of ugly. And I didn't like it. And she was just, she's basically tarnished Giselle's person to Andrew. And Andrew don't like Giselle. But it really is Katie's shit. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, Giselle. So I don't really care for that. Katie didn't come to the makeup focus group that Giselle had. Giselle had a makeup focus group. Katie didn't come and she was being rude whenever they did talk. Um, she was rude to Giselle. She said, oh, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it. And she was real facetious and shady. I was like, child, girl, you are really not. She thinks she's hot diggity dog. You know, she really does. And girl, if nobody ever speaks to you anymore on the whole cast, Girl, we won't have missed anything. So you really are buying into your own product, but nobody else is buying in, honey. Sorry. She's on my nerves. Fuck her. Anyway, um, but she was throwing shade in her confessional talking about, I ain't going to the little makeup party. I'm actually doing real work. And real work is having a swimsuit fashion show. For some old cockabamie and cock and bull goddamn charity, really, girl, that's real work? No, what Giselle's doing is real work, bitch. She's trying to build a brand and make some motherfucking money, bitch, which is what you need to be doing because you don't have no husband, you're not getting no husband, and you run around sucking dick that ain't sucking you back. So, really, you're the one that needs to get down to work. You need to be trying to pay attention to what she's doing instead of sitting around here clowning. Anyway, just stupid. But um, during the makeup uh, focus group, there were a lot of apologies. Katie apologized to, um, not Katie, I'm sorry. Ashley apologized to Lady Big Forehead, which she really just went too far because she's actually planning a function, a party for um, a charity event, basically, she, a bag session. Um, for a little ch little charity that she has going on. And she uninvited. She literally, she's talking about it. But I didn't realize she had actually uninvited Ashley and Michael. She literally had uninvited them. And they went on this golfing trip. And I didn't understand that. They have this golfing trip. And she's like, we're just going to let the men get it together. Because at the makeup party, Katie and 
Karen could not come to a consensus on the shit. Katie got to the point where she was like, man, fuck you, Karen. And Karen's like, fuck you. You know, basically, so they're saying they're going to let the men do it. Now, I don't understand why that was even necessary. Michael wasn't really giving a fuck. And, but for whatever reason, Grady wanted some camera time. So I was like, really, Ray? So next thing you know, they go golfing. And then Ray basically is kind of trying to talk shit to Michael. But Michael's not buying in and accepting the shit that he's talking. So it was really stupid. And I did. I just looked at Ray and I was like, Grady, are you serious? And he's like, you know, it was supposed to be a girl's trip. And I really don't appreciate no man being there. I don't want no man looking at my wife in skippy clothes. Now, come on, Grady. Stop your plan. You know good and goddamn well. Michael was not looking at Wheezy Jefferson when Jenny Willis is there. You know good and motherfucking well that that man who is dating a girl fresh out of her goddamn 20s was not looking at that old motherfucking man that you married to. So I want you to just stop that. You stop that bullshit. Go somewhere and eat some pig feet, bitch. That was just a damn mess. And they just, and he was acting real stupid. I was liking Ray up until then. Ray got on my nerves. I said, well, you try to get some camera balls and try to get some camera time. If you don't take your motherfucking ass somewhere and sit down, that was just ridiculous. Then there was a whole scene I thought was funny. When they went to the, the flower shop, honey, and a little sissy that worked at the flower shop was so not here for Karen's bullshit. Karen was in there with the little assistant girl who... I don't know where the fuck she got her wig from. And that bitch looked like a goddamn extra from the Wiz. Child with this orange, cowardly lying hair. She looked ridiculous. But he was not bad. You know, they were in there with all their flightiness and all their putting on all their ears. That sissy was given very much of whatever. Like, we don't have what you want, bitch. No, they can't be imported because they don't grow. Now, get the fuck fuck out of here. I was like, so here for him, honey. I said, yes, bitch. He gave them the good old get on, honey. I cracked that. But then, once they went to, they had the Lord that Karen still acted shady. After they re-invited Michael and um, Ashley, they were late. It's true. They didn't answer the door. They had them outside waiting, ringing the bell, ringing the bell, ringing the bell. I said, it's so shady. So shady. And then somebody else actually let them in. They weren't going to let them in. They knew who the fuck it was ringing a bell. They were literally not going to let them in. I said, what kind of horrible. So I believe Ashley really has gotten tired of kissing Karen's ass. She just doesn't find it necessary anymore. So she literally had gone to the girls and said whatever she felt like saying because um, it just was what it was. It just was what it was. It was digs and shots fired, honey. That's all it was. She said she made some comment about Karen's wig slipping. I said, oh, child. She's in there talking shit on her in her own party, child. Then she made reference to the fact that Karen had said she don't want her hanging with her daughter, but she said she don't want her daughter hanging with us. And that motherfucking Karen, I thought Karen was going just like, you know, like, girl, no, we're not going to do all this here. And all. Karen went over there and said, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to do, bitch. But don't try to start no shit with me and my girl. I'm paraphrasing, y'all. Don't start no shit with me and my friends, bitch. I told you specifically that I didn't want your stinking ass around my daughter. Not everybody else. Just you, bitch. I said, oh, Karen, okay. Now, I got life off of that. I said, now, that was just good rude and good, honey, and I liked it. It made my stomach jump, honey. I said, oh, no, bitch, I told you that I didn't want my daughter around you specifically, cocksucker. It was you, bitch. No one else. I said, oh, she got her ass, honey. And then as was like, you know, she kept going around and the girls was giving her this, honey. You know, but it was funny, though, before they got there, I thought it was petty that they're supposed to be so above everything. Karen and Ray were actually walking around the party talking about how Ray had let Michael have it. I'm like, to my recollection, Michael did not get let have it by Grady. Grady said whatever he wanted to say, but Michael had paid his ass dust, really. Never did apologize to Karen. 
So I just didn't get that. I was like, that's that was a lot of pettiness, a lot of bitch assness, but whatever. So um, I laughed when Ashley's like, I think we're not wanted here, honey. And they literally they left, but they left Kiki and at them. I said, see, now I could get with that. They literally, her and her husband were so motherfucking and bothered with the fact that. They were mad at them. They were like, child, fuck these people, honey. And they literally walked out of there key keying. I said, okay, that's what I'm talking about. It was a mess. Just a damn mess. The book shows a mess, period. Them and all that old fuck that bullshit. Karen told her, I'm done with you. But she was already done with you, so it wasn't a real big deal. I said, I, I see ain't no love loss right there. But um, yeah, mm, mess. Just mess. Everybody mess. All in the thing, because literally the girls fed Ashley what was said about her before she got there, and then they turned around and fed Karen. I said, look at them going back and forth, honey, carrying bones back and forth. Just a mess, trying to see who's going to get the, uh, the unlucky bounce. That was a mess. Anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down. Y'all know how that all works, and I will see you guys next week. All right, bye.